Hi everyone, it's Sharon here from I Restore Stuff and thanks so much for joining us again today. I have my special guest here, Julie Henderson from Chalk and Trees. Um, and if you joined us last week, you will know that we're doing a three-part series. It may even stretch to four, Julie, because we've thought of some other great things, <laughs> that, haven't we, in the meantime? It's a black hole. It is. It could be a black hole. <laughs> anyway, we've, I've really enjoyed having yeah. Julie here. Last week was just really educational, so if you didn't uh, get onto that live, I will post the link in just a second. I'll be over here um, on my laptop taking your comments, your questions, but today's all about Wood finishes part two, removing the substrate or removing that existing finish on our pieces. So last week, Julie taught us how to test what is on your surface and we had things like shellac finishes, lacquer finishes, mm -hmm. tell us some other ones, varnish. Varnish, polyurethane, polyurethane, oil finishes, oil finishes, and painted. Excellent. So we had all of those different finishes and we went through a scientific process <laughs> with our goggles and everything on how to test your finishes. Once you know that, then we can go on to removing them, yes. can't we? And that's perfect if you want to restore your finishes and not just paint them, but you're gonna talk all about that. Take it away, Julie. All right. Big hearts for Julie, everybody. Press the like button. And if you know someone who'd love to hear this video today, please just share it with your friends, share it on your pages right now, and you'll be able to jump right back in and you won't miss a beat. Thanks, and Julie. later, jump yes. over to my page, Chalk and Trees, and check it out, and yes. give me a like too. That's exactly right. I'll put Julie's links in the comments. That so would be great. Thank you, Julie. Thanks for having me, Sharon. I'm really excited to be back um, a week later. Uh, so thanks, everyone, for joining me the first time around. There's been an overwhelming response, and I feel so grateful that you've um, been so supportive and interested in what I've been doing. So I'm really glad to be back today talking about how to remove your substrate. So I'm going to make the assumption that you have already identified your finish according to my process that I shared with you last week in the first tutorial. Um, so I'm going to assume that you know what you're working with. Okay, so now that you know what your finish is, I want you to have a think about what kind of look you're going for for your piece. So there's lots of tutorials already existing um, about the different types of prep you need to do if you're painting your piece. So I'm not going to be talking about preparing a surface for painting today. What I'm going to be talking about is preparing a surface for um, when you want to restore it or refinish it. Okay, so your first step is to assess your surface and have a look at it really closely. Um, look at uh, what final look you want to go for and make a decision on whether your surface can be repaired. Because if you're like me, um, you're a lazy DIYer and you wanna do as little as possible to get an amazing result. So if you can, at, if it is at all possible to repair your finish rather than restore it, um, that's the best way to go in my mind. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about the different types of finishes and how you can repair minor damage and at what point do you have to move on to the next step which is stripping and refinishing your piece. Um, so just to cover off on a few different types of repairs we can do, um, have a look at this little table at the front here first of all. So last week we had a look at this table and we identified that it is polyurethane finish. Um, so ignoring the back part of the piece here which is for later in the tutorial we're going to focus on the front here. So have a look at your piece. Has it got some scratches um, that you might be able to repair rather than stripping the whole lot off? This piece here is it's a, it's a fairly deep gouge, um, but it doesn't go through to the bottom. So the way that you can tell whether it goes through your, um, through your finish is if there's discoloration underneath. So this here, it's um, still the same color as the wood. So it hasn't gone black um, or darkened or discolored. So we know that we can potentially repair that. Um, finish rather than restoring it. And there's also, I can see that this piece has had a sand. So there's a lot of superficial um, scratches here that you can easily repair as well. 
Okay, so jumping back uh, onto the different types of finishes, I first want to talk about shellac and lacquer finishes. So if you tuned into my um, tutorial last week, you'll know that we identified this um, piece here as being a lacquer finish. Um, and we have this drawer here as well, which was identified as being a shellac finish. So if you have one of these finishes, you are quite lucky because they're the easiest to repair. Um, and the reason for that is because shellac and lacquer finishes um, are reconstituted by adding the solvent. So if you're looking at a shellac finish, um, you can see on the front here we have some surface scratches here. Uh, shellac is made up of shellac flakes mixed in with methylated spirits. So if we add in um, a solution of methylated spirits, we can paint that on with an artist brush. Just very lightly, just do, I haven't got my metho over here, my metho is here. So I've got some metho. Let your trusty assistant remember, need any help, just let me know. Oh, thanks. Thank do you, you. want to help? Yes, of course I'm going to Oh, okay. Help. <laughs> Look, I think that we should put glasses on. Oh, we on. have to put our safety first. Yeah, safety first. We've got our safety precautions. Guys, if you're tuning in from somewhere else in the world other than Australia, um, let us, or you can actually tell us, if you're from Australia, we'd love to know that too. So what part of the world are you tuning in from? Just pop it in the comments there. Oh, please but do. Yeah, that'd be great. That would Share be awesome. the like button. If you have a question, let Julie know. Please. She'll do your best to answer it. Goggles on. Yeah, goggles on. Probably it's the look. a bit excessive for, you know, painting, but whatever. We're, That's all right. You know, we're going to be overly cautious here. That's exactly right. And we're gloves as well. So these chemicals are pretty uh, nasty. We want to make sure we don't damage our skin. Or if you've got any cuts on your hand, getting metho on them right. or denatured alcohol, depending on what part of the world you're from, um, can be quite painful. Okay, so if we've got a shellac finish here, um, there's some surface scratches on the front. I don't know if you can see uh, those, but all you need to do in order to reconstitute that finish and repair minor scratches is... I'll bring your methylated spirits. Oh, thank you. Is that you. what we're looking for? Yeah. Now, so remember Julie said this is called something else. Denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol, if you're in Canada or USA. Yeah. I think. So all you need to do is dip your little artist brush in and just ever so gently paint on over the scratch. Very, very gently there. That's all you need to do. So what's going to happen is that's going to soften your finish and then as it dries, it will knit back together and form a beautiful hard finish again. Um, so nice. once that's dry, your, your little scratch that you had there will completely disappear. Magic. Yeah, it is magic. So um, we're going to use this later and we're actually going to strip this piece. Awesome. So I'm not going to stress excellent. too much about it. Um, same goes for lacquer. So lacquer... Um, Lacquer scratches, and this piece here has loads of them. I'm actually not going to open my lacquer thinner because it's really stinky. Um, but this piece here does have some scratches on it. So same goes. Dip your artist brush into the lacquer thinner, paint it on ever so gently, and then it will um, reconstitute. And once it dries, it will seal hard again and you'll um, have repaired your minor scratches. Lacquer finishes and shellac finishes are also quite vulnerable to water um, and moisture damage. So you will sometimes see on old beautiful um, pieces, they have white rings. So that's uh, damage caused by moisture. And um, those kinds of damage can be repaired in a couple of ways. So if you have a polish, you can try first off polishing those, um, those white rings out. Um, if that doesn't work, then wipe it over with some denatured alcohol, alcohol or uh, metho. So that should dissolve your um, white ring and get rid of it completely, mm. which is great. That's good. Have we got any yes. questions? Um, no, no questions at the moment. We've got a few shout outs from um, saying hello, Ashley from... Uh, and Fiona DeBell and Hi. Uh, Lisa Alexander. Hi, ladies. Thanks for joining us today. We've Thank got a you. Of people jumping on, learning about finishes. Yeah. So I think everybody will who have watched the first um, instalment will realise that I am a bit uncoordinated. <laughs> so <laughs> I had a little no, bit not. of a. <laughs> I've the already... lid was off. If you didn't see the first one. <laughs> 
you know what? I've already spilt my coffee this morning. It's all so right. Let's face it. <laughs> We're on a roll. I know. Well, I've We've come already prepared. had your accident for this morning. It's all right. Look, we um, won't do it again. <laughs> We probably will, but that's fine. Anyway, so I have put down a drop sheet today yes. because what I'm about to do can get quite messy. Um, so you Bring can see on. on the floor here we have our beautiful um, plastic drop sheet. So you yeah. can use a painter's drop sheet or whatever you have handy yes. or just a bit of um, plastic because when we start removing these finishes, if you're anything like me, you're a big grot and <laughs> you're going to make a mess. So, so what are we doing first? Okay, so um, we've talked about the moisture uh, moisture issues. So now what I want to talk about is a technique um, that I'm actually going to use on this old Singer box here. So many of you may have seen your grandma's old sewing that machine. Is yeah, they I are love. gorgeous. So this um, is from a sewing machine that is from 1960 so it's over a hundred years Ooh, old it's wow. actually in pretty good nick it's got some veneer issues and whatnot um, but for the purposes of today I'm going to talk to you about the concept restoration so rather than refinishing your um, surface you might want to restore it because when I'm done with this, I want this to look like an amazing 100-year-old piece. I don't want it to look like a brand new piece that you can just get down the shop. So I want to enhance the beauty of the existing finish, which is quite dried out. It's a bit... Um, uh, it's a bit crumbly and and you know there's a little it's a little bit patchy in spots so the way that I'm going to do that and I discovered this week when I was on a um, sewing forum that there is a concoction which is very similar to the one I'm going to show you today Ooh, called, we're going to make up something yeah well it's called Fenman's elixir oh I love sounds the word interesting well elixir sounds magical to me it does it sounds very chemical or chemistry or extra yeah well it, it totally awesome. is so um, the Fenman's elixir is a combination of solutions, um, slightly different. So today I'm calling this Henderson's elixir. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> but I can't really patent that one. I, know. I can't actually. Henderson's elixir. Yeah, I can't take credit for it because um, this is something that a people have used for people use. Yeah, yeah, many people have used it for the years. So that sounds great. Yeah, so I'm going to show you how to do that today. So making up your Henderson's elixir, we need the following ingredients. I just want to say before you do that. Thanks to those people who are sharing the video right now. Oh. I've been jumping over, sharing their video on their pages, and um, good on you. Thank, Thank you so you much. Guys. And also, Lisa Robinson said, Thanks, ladies. One white ring on Parker table is about to get busted. Yeah. So, yes, on a nice Parker table, you don't want white rings. So, thanks no. for that tip, Julie. Oh, that's good. All right, our ingredients for okay. Henderson's Elixir okay. about to be revealed. <laughs> All right. Okay, it's not really that. <laughs> just, for, just for today, we'll um, give me a bit of a street cred. Yeah. Okay, so what I have here is your home brand white vinegar. So this is just your normal white vinegar that you get in your supermarket. Um, I've got some methylated spirits or denatured alcohol. I've got the pale boiled linseed oil, which we talked about last time. So make sure that you don't get the raw linseed oil as it will said. You need the pale boiled linseed oil which has the added drying agents to it. Um, and then on the end there, we have some mineral turpentine. Uh, so that mineral turpentine is um, pretty stinky stuff. So this little combo of ingredients here is gonna be a bit stinky. And because of my issue with being uncoordinated, I did not trust myself to measure this out live on camera, so. I was gonna I, say, is there quantities that you use? All you have to do is um, measure out equal parts. Equal so parts. it doesn't really matter exactly how much you wanna do, but it's one part of each. And, um, you only make up as much as you need for your project that day because this stuff does not keep. Mm -hmm. um, it'll keep for a couple of days, but um, power board linseed oil in particular has been known to spontaneously combust if you don't discard um, your... Uh, <laughs> Marty's uh, combusting over there. Yeah. So if you don't discard <laughs> your don't ingredients properly um, and leave them hanging around in your workshop, you do not want to do that. So make mm. sure you get rid of it as soon as possible. So all I'm going to do is hopefully not um, tip anything over here, but just tip these ingredients into a clean jar. So I just got my old pasta sauce jar. So in goes the vinegar, 
In goes a meth though. Can you just tell me again what this is good for, what surfaces it's good for? So this is good for shellac. Shellac surface. Okay. Right. So cleaning your shellac antique pieces. Yes. And um, if you are, so, and you can do it with lacquer as well. Right. But, lacquer and shellac. Yep, yeah, lacquer and Clean. shellac. So if you are um, a newbie mm -hmm. or you want to be a bit cautious or you have a really expensive antique, um, omit the methylated spirits because okay. that is what dissolves your finish. So that is what makes this concoction a little bit scary. Right. Um, so we're going to have to work fast once we get this right, yeah. um, put together. Put back on. Am I yeah. helping? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love having a helper. I don't normally get anyone helping me. Okay, so I'm just mixing all of these ingredients together and in goes the mineral in time. Cheryl is asking, how do you discard it safely? You just mean throw your, you mean the liquid or the cloth that you're going to put it on with? Both. Well, I um, just put it in the bin, but... Um, you know, if you're being quite finicky about it, some people do wash out all their cloths um, and leave them dry before they discard them. So, right. um, you know, here here we go. I don't know, there's something <coughs> gross in the bottom of this jar. I have no idea where it's come from or what it is, but we'll just pretend that it's not there. So um, sure. you can see that I've shaken up my <laughs> mixture. It's so professional. Um, I'm shaking it up and it's changed colour. So it's gone cloudy. It's sort of like a pale yellow colour. It's like lemon butter. It is. You know, like that colour anyway. Mm. So what this process is called is emulsifying. Right. So it's like when you make a salad dressing, an oil vinegar salad dressing, and you mix it together. So it emulsifies. And as it sits, it will actually separate out again. So, you know, you, you might have to shake up your mixture while awesome. you're working as well. Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to... Um, now show you how to start working on this. Yeah, now I'd like to just point out this gorgeous singer sign here. So what are you going to do about that, Julie? Okay, so that um, singer sign is painted on. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to work around that. Because if you did put this mixture on that, would it disappear? Yes. And we don't want that, do we? No. No. No, so we yes. don't. We'll work around it? Yes, we are going to work okay. around it. And in fact, I might just start with the back. So I don't Sounds even like have to We don't have to do that about blah, it. and then you won't be stressed. Yeah, um, yeah actually getting it. So would you like a piece yes. of steel wool? I will, just let me get my gloves on. So we're using steel wool? Yep. Do we need the whole piece or can I just divide that? Yeah, yeah, you probably can okay. divide it. Because I don't think I need a big, a bigger piece. No. There's a bigger piece. Okay. Oh, we could have done that. Yes, so could you? <laughs> Sharing is scary. <laughs> That's it. I get my goggles on so I look professional like you. Julie's actually a scientist, aren't you? You mm -hmm. did your degree in some kind of scientific something. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> that was so technical. That's, yeah, that's exactly what I did. Scientific something at uni for a very long time. Yes. Um, yeah, so I actually did biomedical science. So, there you go. Um, I'm, you know, not a scientist at the moment, obviously. No, you look, you like doing all this kind of stuff and I you do. tell that you know what you're doing. So I do. Oh, thank you. That's nice to hear. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is to start cleaning up this piece. So this piece probably looks so scungy and awful because mm. it's got a hundred yes. years of dirt on it. It does. So what we're going to do, and we have to work relatively quickly, mm -hmm. we cannot leave um, this solution to sit on the surface on the because okay. both need it will start to strip it. Um, so what we're going to do is, oh, I love, excuse me, I love putting my mixtures in saw bottles. So I have heaps of these in my workshop and I use them over and over and clean them out. So um, this is not barbecue sauce. This is what I would use to tip my solution in because I find it easier to apply to the surface. Um, except I'm too scared to do that because... <laughs> I'm too uncoordinated to do it live on camera. So we're just gonna, no, we're going to work out the that jar. This looks like, you can see these grains in here. It looks like that's finish and the light bit underneath is underneath wood. Is that correct? Yes. Is it like finish all kind of chipping and coming off, really? Yeah, so this um, is a shellac finish yes. and it's probably been polished over the years. Yeah. But you know what? It's 100 years old. So we're just going to go with it and see Let's what it looks this. like. And the good thing is, is if you don't like it and it doesn't work out mm -hmm. the way that you envision, you can always strip it off yeah okay so um, so we're just cleaning today not stripping it off well oh, we kind of are because we've got steel wool and now this is four o zero 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 steel super wool. super fine super fine yep so i'm just loading up my steel watch wool you first okay that's fine um so i've just loaded up my steel wool with this solution here there mm -hmm. you go 
Turn. And all I'm going to do, you always work with the grain. With the grain. So because this is a bent wood case, the grain actually goes over like this, not across. So you never work against the grain. Um, so what I'm going to do is start gently rubbing. So all I'm going to do is gently rub it. And what this is going to do, so there's four parts to this mixture. I'll just um, Should I start recap. This too? Yeah, if you like. Okay, so we've got vinegar in there. So your vinegar is going to help you clean. You've got mineral turpentine. That is used for removing waxes and oils and residues from your polishes. Um, and you've got boiled in seed oil. So that's there to nourish timber. Okay, so work in small sections and then start wiping it back. You can see on the rag there how dirty this piece is. So we're starting to take off all that 100 year old dirt. So can you tell me again why we don't want to leave it on there very long? Because the methylated spirits, which is the final ingredient, oh, yeah. will start stripping off the shellac. Okay, and we don't want to strip it off, we're just kind of cleaning yeah. it and reconstituting it and moving it around? Yes. So we're just going to make this look amazing, um, but still keep the edge to it. And what they right. call that age is patina. Yeah. So people pay a lot of money for patina. We don't want to get rid of it. I see. And you can't replicate it. It's oh, really difficult. Goodness. Yeah, so it's starting to really be. And you can see the beautiful tiger oak underneath. Hang on, let's see if we've got some hearts. There's no hearts. I don't <gasps> see any hearts, what? people. Come on. I oh think my this goodness, is great. I'm working hard. <laughs> Give me Hang some on, hearts. I'll just put this here. Maybe All I right. see comments again. If you have any questions, just post them in the comments. I will check in just a second after I finish my hard work. Yeah. <laughs> Put it into work. All right. That's it. So Enjoy this base bit down here as well. Yeah. So I'm just going to do the lot, but I'm not going to do the sides today because I haven't taken off the hardware and there's some veneer that I need to repair. Um, but that's a story for another day. Yes. Um, but you can see how much feral dirt there is on this piece. So it's actually quite beautiful underneath. Um, and then once you've done cleaning process, can you see Sharon, yeah. how it's starting to reconstitute yeah, that I finish? Yeah, I can see that. That's lovely. This is um, like sandpaper as well, so it's very, very fine um, sanding motion, which will make your surface beautifully smooth again as well. So I'm enjoying can, this. It's good, isn't it? It's so go. satisfying. Okay. Go see if there's any questions. Okay, you do that. Comments. I'm going to keep really going with this. Fun. I know. I loved this. So I do this over um, over stripping any day. This is much easier than stripping, and you know you still get a beautiful finish. So I don't know if you can see in the centre there the comparison, and you can start to see this beautiful tiger oak, which is what they used on a lot of the old Singer machines, um, being revealed. So once this has dried and cured, um, and you'll know it's cured once you can stop smelling the boiled linseed oil. So boiled linseed oil kind of smells like walnuts to me. Um, so once that boiled linseed oil smell uh, has gone away, the piece has cured, and then you can start to refinish it with your new sealant. Um, so this cleaning solution, Hendo's Elixir, <laughs> um, is pretty effective for old shellac and lacquer pieces. Um, this, rah, so you just gotta get a bit of elbow grease in there. Um, but work fairly quickly and not going over the same spot too much or you'll start to strip finish. Oh, Lynn just mentioned that audio is ahead of the video at the moment. That sometimes happens with Facebook Lives, doesn't it? Oh. Looks like our lips are out of sync or something. Oh, no, that's no, no. annoying to watch. That's really annoying. <laughs> Hang with us, people. Yeah. Just refresh your feed or something. It yeah. Might it might come right. Maybe try and refresh. So we're just going to... Um, Did you do this one? Oh. I'll do it again. Okay. It's really satisfying, <laughs> isn't it? Let's keep going. So you can see here that the mix just started to separate out because um, the oil and the, uh, the other ingredients. Oh, yeah. So what it's we just have to do is give it a good old shake. And I know you don't like stinky things, Sharon, but how... Yeah. It's, it's not too bad, it's actually. Not. I think it's, it's got... It must be the uh, boiling seed oil I can smell. I do like that oily smell. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad. Okay. I don't think we really have to have our masks, although we probably should. I don't, I don't feel like this needs masks. So it's sort of like a lemony oil smell because mm. of the vinegar. It just smells like salad dressing, kind yes, of. Yes, a little bit like salad dressing. Like, with Do a bit not of turpentine. Do not put it on your salad, people. No. 
You will not want it on your salmon. That's right. gorgeous. All right, so let's leave that there for now. Um, move on to our next thing. Yeah, so later in the, um, in the piece, I'll finish that off and decides as well. So um, you can really see the difference yeah, there. You and can. you can see where the shellac has crazed um, mm -hmm. and it's really reconstituted it let's and made it, it little, smooth um, again. Turn around and show you the difference so you can see those sections there compared to the beautiful finish on there. All right, so that's cleaning up shellac and lacquer. Yes, so that that's in. your cleaning, cleaning solution that you need to use. Oh, I'll just pop that out of the way. All oh, right. Excuse me. Okay, so now I want to head back to the polyurethane and talk about how you can repair a polyurethane finish. Um, and, the, and this applies to varnish as well. So um, when we were looking at that little table down the front, we noticed that there was a couple of different types of um, damage to it. So we had some very superficial scratches mm -hmm. and we had some deeper gouges. So I want to talk to you about a couple of options for repairing that. So these right. here, I don't know if you've seen these before, but these are yes. wax sticks. Wax sticks. So these are little wax sticks and they come in all different colours. So. Um, you kind of buy them in a set like that. And you can use these to fill in a little bit deeper gouges. Mm. All you need to do is select the one that cl most Close closely color. matches. Right. Okay, so, so I'm guessing maybe that one or, no, that one's yep, too light. The darker one, I think. That You reckon that one? I don't notice. That one? I think so. Okay. All right, so all you have to do with this is rub it over the top of your deep scratch. And what it will do is um, fill in that hole. So you can see that that gouge um, will eventually fill in. Mm -hmm. So it's just filling in the hole with a bit of wax. And then you buff it off, buff yep. off any excess. And then you can... Um, and, and then you can just wax over the top of everything. So waxing is not a great option if you want to use it on a dining table, I don't think, because wax finishes need to be reapplied. Um, so you can rub over the top of that with steel wool if you prefer. Okay, so we're filling it in a little bit. It's still a bit sticky and tacky. But we'll use a steel wool or something. Yes, okay. and then you can fill it with a, a paste wax. So right. we've got this gorgeous Miss Mustard Seed one here. Yep. Um, so this is a furniture wax and you can use that on your furniture. I'm just going to open it up so you can see inside. This is like the biggest jar in the whole wide world. Yes, because I do lots of waxing and furniture repair, so I need a big one. Yeah, you do. Uh, so this wax here is, is absolutely beautiful. It's quite soft. Um, so what you would do is then once you've buffed and filled in your, um, your deep gouge, uh, then you can just wax over the top and even out your surface. So that's a good way to go. But I won't do that today because what I want to show you is how you can fill in little um, superficial nicely. scratches. Okay, so I've got an artist brush here. Um, and you can you can try and sand out your scratches as well. Hi Michelle from New York. Thanks hey for Michelle. In. How's it going? <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks so much guys for sharing this video. Yeah. Hope you're learning lots today. All right, so this is Sandy Sharon's hands. fabulous Sandy Hands glove, which I'm not going to try and use because I'm actually left-handed. I know, sorry I didn't have your left-handed one. I should have brought my I actually own. sometimes um, like to do, you know, your right hand gets tired after a while. So, yeah, yeah, when you're doing a big piece, definitely. <laughs> um, so if you've got some uh, scratches in your poly, you can lightly sand it. So this is 400 grit. Mm. Um, so anything above 240, you can start to sand out those um, yeah. gouges. And then you've got your uh, polyurethane mixture here. So this is Fusion Tough Coat, which is a wipe-on poly, yep. um, which is a fabulous product. I'm sure Sharon can pop up the link got the for links. people. You can jump on my website and get any of those. It's Australia wide but if you're not in Australia you can look at fusionmineralpaint.com and find your nearest retailer and grab yourself some tough coat wipe on poly this is yeah it's my absolute favorite doesn't product. yellow it's a non-yellowing 
um, yeah. polyurethane. And what I like is this little squeezy applicator. Yes. Um, it's just handy, yeah. you know. That one isn't a new one, is it? No? No, it's one. open. Um, so I'm, I've just got a, a little plastic lid here, so I'm going to use that just to tip a tiny bit out. Um, let's wipe that top of that so it doesn't get all clogged up. All right, so I've just put a little teeny tiny bit on this plastic bit here, uh, plastic lid here. So this is how you can fill in some of your very superficial scratches. So again, artist brush, um, lightly dab it in to your paint and then very carefully just dab over your surface and you can do like a little spot repair on your poly. Um, okay. You may need to um, do more than one coat uh, to try and blend in your finishes, but you can spot repair poly, which is um, mm. fabulous. So, it, you know, it, it's best to get on top of your maintenance issues with your wood yeah. quicker because they can deteriorate mm. over time. Yeah. And obviously you've got to clean it first and remove dirt and debris and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. cleaning with sugar soap. I've got these um, fabulous sugar soap wipes that I like to use. Oh, sugar soap wipes. Have you seen these? I did these? not know oh my that goodness. they came in wipes. They are the best. I'll take them out okay. in a bit once mm. we strip that table um, so to if show you. you. In the USA, they use something called TSP. So, and I forget what that stands for, but that's Trisodium phosphate, I think. Thank you. Sorry, I'm da, the da, 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 the scientist. <laughs> Scientific words. Things oh. like that make me happy. Mm, so yes. say it again, just so you can make you happy. What is it? Sodium phosphate. Oh my goodness, try it. All right, sugar soap here in Australia. And they come in wipes. Oh my goodness, didn't even know that. Uh, these are the best yeah. things in the whole wide world. Going right out after here to buy some from the hardware store. Yeah, they're really, really good. Okay, so um, that's how you do all your repairs. So we've talked about hey. doing minor repairs on furniture. Yep. So that is doing a repair rather than um, a strip and refill finish is always your easiest option yes. um, so but now I want to cover off on how if you can't repair your service mm -hmm. surface if it's um, irreparably damaged if any of the scratches or gouges have gone through the top coat finish yep. you need to fully strip it there is no mm -hmm. way that you can attempt mm -hmm. a repair at that point um, wow. so at that point we're going to start talking about um, how we how we strip our finishes all right so what are we going to be working on okay i'm just going to clear off the surface here so the first thing that i want to talk about is removing waxes and oils so can i ask you mm. what would be uh, why would i um strip the surface rather than sand it off with my orbital sander or my big gougy sander because i'm a bit lazy sometimes and i just do that yeah, and What's you, the advantages of you can do that, but I actually think that's more work in my mind. In your, yes. um, especially if you're working with a shellac or a lacquer finish, because right. I just think it's so easy to strip. Yeah, that'd be easy. Um, I think too, though, when you're using a sander, you've got to be really careful because you can actually gouge into the surface. Yep. You can get those little Divots. divot marks with the orbital sander. I've done that before and had to redo a whole tablecloth because once the stains hit those uh, divots they really stand out mm, that's right and your dark waxes and things like that so yeah that's right um, okay so yeah I, I actually prefer not to use um, sanders yep. just because I feel like these finishes are really hard yes. and they do clog up the pads but especially if we're using we're doing things on antiques we're talking about antiques here so yeah. you don't want to be totally distressing and damaging what wood is underneath so the sander would possibly do more damage mm. rather than just stripping the surface off and this is a veneer so this is okay. a very t very, very thin, thin layer, of, layer wood. of wood yeah. and it's so easy to go through veneer trust yeah, me i right. have done it um okay so the first thing i want to talk to you about is stripping oh. off any wax or oil finishes so mm. if you remember in the last tutorial we had this drawer and we did a scratch test on it and it uh, left a scratch in the surface which meant that there was wax um, on top of this uh, right. surface here. This table here was also an oil finish. You can do the same method um, to strip right. that off. So if you don't take off any waxes or oils you will get resistance when you try to yeah. strip the yeah. surface. So just joined us we're doing part two which is how to remove the finishes of your wood uh, antique pieces 
Uh, in part one, which the link is in the comments, I've just posted that before, part one is was how to test what surface you're working on. So as Julie said, we tested this one last week and we found there's a bit of wax on the top of the surface. Yes, that's right. So here I have mineral turpentine. Um, and depending on where you are in the world, uh, it can be called white spirits or yep. mineral spirits. Um, same deal same same, same uh, kind of properties stuff. as well yeah. so all I'm going to do is get my trusty uh, four zero steel wool super fine steel wool um, so I use this because when you sand with sandpaper um, or any kind of sanding really, you are actually mm. putting very fine gouges in your wood even mm. with the finest of sandpapers right. um, whether you can see them with your naked eye or not okay. they are still there so I feel like it is less damaging to um, strip off your finishes with this this mm. is I use this over sandpaper when I'm working with veneer pieces because yep. I know that this won't go through my veneer mm. it's very very soft yes it it's is. almost like um, rough cotton wool if okay. that makes sense mm. um, but yeah it's very soft and it won't damage your surface so I'm just going to apply um, some mineral turpentine to my steel wool and you know if I was at home I would have put it in a bottle uh, because I wouldn't just be working on a drawer I'd be wearing all piece yeah. and you have to take off the wax off the whole piece so all you need to do do you want to have a go at that, yeah. Sharon, so you can feel so, what it feels like? Do we need to be going with the grain like this? Or oh, yes, yeah, sorry. I wasn't looking the right way. Yes, right. please go with the grain always. Um, yeah, so you can maybe feel a tiny bit of resistance under there. So um, with wax and oil finishes, the waxes and oils can clog up your steel wool. Sorry, camera guys. Yes. It's easier for me to do this. It is, isn't it? So once you've dislodged your wax and oil, you then wipe it away I with your rag. Too much resistance. I think it's pretty, pretty it's old and bad. thin. Mm. Okay, so now if we just show it compared to that side, you can see it looks a bit, it looks a bit duller. So you can see now that that wax is um, has gone off that surface. There's something here I can see. I don't know what that is, but okay. I feel like I need to slide back. Yeah, I know. Instead of going with the grain. But oh, yeah, look, it's cleaning whatever that was. You know, because this is the top of the drawer, I'm imagining it would have got a lot more grunge on the top. Yeah. So even if it wasn't wax, but it was a bit of grungy stuff, this would help to clean it off, right? Yeah. And normally we would remove handles here too. You mentioned that. Well, I would. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just mm. was being lazy. Yeah, we're just um, doing a little part of it. Yeah. So when I actually remove it, I'd remove all the hardware first. Yeah. Um, Okay, so now that we have our... Um, you can see it's cleaner. Yeah, definitely. It does uh, clean up your piece for you as well. Mm. So now that we've removed that any wax, oily residue, yes. that will also remove like silicon-based polishes. You oh, know yeah. how we were talking last week about how <laughs> back in the day everyone used a bit of Pledge or Mr. Sheen? Yes, that's um, right. So that Still will take away do. those residues yeah. as well. Okay. Um, so this here is my trusty bottle, which I've already loaded up with metho. I can't help it. I'm just cleaning. Oh no! Please do. That <laughs> fine saves me a job. <laughs> That's great. Let's keep going. <laughs> okay. So now that um, you've removed the the wax and oil, you can mm -hmm. start to remove the finish underneath. Right. So we know from the other week that this is actually a, so a lac finish. Yeah. Um, and it's difficult because it's not a flat surface. I could have picked a flat drawer, but you know, whatever, so, Trevor. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, Still okay, so if if you're working on a flat surface, you can actually just splosh this on or paint it on um, and leave it for a couple of minutes and it will start to dissolve that shellac and make it a bit sticky. Um, so, But because I'm not working on a flat surface, I'm just going to load up my steel wool and then very gently go in with the grain start rubbing it back. Sorry, what do we have in here again? Methylated spirits, oh, denatured metho. alcohol. Yep. Oh, do you know, I love doing this so much. It's so I ridiculous. I do. <laughs> it's, it's so satisfying seeing well, this. I love seeing that wood grain. I know, look at that. Amazing that is. Ta-da! It's just so beautiful. <laughs> and once we get off all the old finish, mm. this is going to be the most beautiful piece. You mm. can imagine that once you um, put your top coat back on it, you'll be yes. able to see that gorgeous That's wood right. grain. Mm. And comparing it to this, mm. 
you know. Yeah. It's such a transformation. And that's what I love about restoring um, finishes or Mm -hmm. refinishing pieces like this. Um, added That's benefit of using the steel wool. Look at the difference. That's amazing. Can you see it? Yeah. Look at here and you can hardly even see the grain, whereas over here, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous grain. Yeah, it is beautiful. And um, you can... Uh, this steel wool is slightly abrasive and it just mm -hmm. takes off any of those rough edges. Yep. Which is why you're going with the grain of the... Not across the grain because that would not be... Anyway, it would be much easier to do this if I'd bothered to remove the, um, the hardware. Handle. But it's good we can see the difference there. Mm. And can finish it properly. Yeah, that's right. So again, this is a, a shellac piece that has gone nearly black. We talked about um, what happens to shellac as it ages. And you can either use this uh, Henderson's elixir yes. or you can um, fully strip it. Right. So uh, I think... Oh, where's so we're using uh, methyl methyl spirits again. Remember shellac to dissolve it, metho. Yes. Methylated spirits, which and is called something else in the other parts of the world. Denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol. Okay, there so if you this have one here. Make sure you pop them in the comments. So this one here is a shellac finish. We, um, oh, I think may need a close up on this if that's okay, because yeah. I want to show you how scrungy and gross the shellac is. Can you see that? I'm not sure which camera is. Oh looking. yeah! Oh my goodness! Look at that. Yeah, I've got it right there. Yeah, <laughs> so you can see that black, um, it basically it's just dirty shellac that we have now that. stripped away. Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness, look how gorgeous Isn't that's going to be. Isn't this silky oak yeah. just amazing? Now is this a veneer as well? Mm. Possibly. I think there's, well, it's about this thin. It. Yes, it is a veneer. Yeah. Yep, it is a veneer. Yeah. Usually when you get... Um, I want to help with this one. Oh, I've just okay. got to figure out which one I had. It doesn't matter. You'll be right. Metho. You can use this one if you Give want. Give me some metho. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my All right. goodness. Give the woman metho. Right. I've got it. Okay. This is so this much fun. Is, this makes me excited. I know, because I'm just seeing that. Yay! Oh, yes. Julie, you're going to have me making all these wood pieces beautiful again. I know. And again, would have removed the handles, but we just ran out of time or something. We'll just make oh, up an excuse. I just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> Whatever. It would look nicer. Oh, oh yeah. Speaking would. of handles, mm. you know, do you clean your hardware? And maybe another whole live we need to talk about too. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so we will talk about cleaning hardware another time, but yes. Yeah. Look at that. That will come up nicely. Yes. Oh, wow. Isn't it amazing? with the grain here or is the grain this way? I don't even know. Uh, no, it's across. It's even though you that can see squiggles. Look. Oh yes, you can. So yep, this because is because of the silky oak. Yeah, this squiggle. is quarter uh, quarter sawn silky oak and the, the grain that you're seeing is called lace wood. Lace wood the grain. The tree lady. So husband's an arborist. Yeah. And so Julie learns all these fun things about people. I'm not sure how fun they are for anyone else, but for me um, That's exciting. I get very excited about uh, wood grains and um, I think that's why I like doing this. So basically all you have to do is you'll need to change your steel wool, you need to um, change your rag because pushy. what you don't want to be doing is reapplying yes, your scungy old, old stuff. Yeah. That's true. So we basically want to keep going over this with a new surface the of the rag. Of the coming yeah. down there. I know. See Sharon, I've got a convert here. I know. I've, I've done this before but it just reminds me, I haven't done it for such a long time. It just reminds me how satisfying it is. It is. <laughs> but anyway, I know that everyone's just going to jump through their screen and want to do this as well with me. Who's with me? Hit the like button. Hit the hearts. Yeah. Doesn't right. that just look really, really nice? Yep. So then, uh, so you would put another finish on top of that then? Would yeah, so this is, now, this is now um, Pretty much. raw wood. Yeah. So the next, uh, we've obviously cleaned that bit a little bit better, so we can, you know, you'd probably still go with this a little bit more, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, There's absolutely, absolutely. Um, so yeah, you can see though that how different that looks, yeah. even just with that little bit yes, of time. But you absolutely. keep going over it until you stop taking off the shellac, um, and that's when you know that you're done. So I'm going to pop this to the side just for the minute. 
Um, so we can start talking about removing um, polyurethane finishes. Oh, sorry, removing lacquer. I'm not going to do it today because ee, um, because lacquer thin is really, really woofy. Um, but um, it is. Mm. Sorry, I just stop saying woofy. I don't know. Stinky. Maybe, I don't know. Lacquer thinner. So when you remove a lacquer finish, what you do is you get a 50-50 mixture of methylated spirits and lacquer thinner. Ah. Paint it onto your surface, leave it for about a minute, no longer than a minute because it will dry really, really quickly and then you scrape it back with a scraper. Right. So, um, so that one you do as soon as possible. You put it on, scrape it off. Do it either with a respirator or this is really toxic stuff, yep. this lacquer thinner, so you don't want to be mucking about with it mm -hmm. um, for you know, any length of time. Yep. So basically paint your 50-50 mixture of methylated spirits and lacquer thinner mm -hmm. and then scrape back right. um, your surface, being yep. careful not to dig in and gouge on your surface. Excellent. So um, You can see there's cracks in here, which is the cracks in the surface really of the lacquer, isn't it? Yes, it's that's right, itself. that's right. Um, yep. And if you miss any of this today, we're going to put it all in a blog post. All the information will be there, exactly what to do on each surface. So this is your um, lacquered surface, mm -hmm. and we've just covered that. That's right. And the next one is um, our very last process, which is removing polyurethane um, paint or varnish finishes. So um, you have to use chemical stripper. So where is our chemical stripper so I can show you? There's lots of different ones on the market. Uh, this is the Diggers brand of paint stripper, which is what we've used today. So this takes an hour to do its magic. And all you do is you get a, a dodgy old brush that you don't mind uh, sacrificing. Yep, which we did earlier. Yep, we did earlier. And you paint this on about two meters thick. Um, so quite a thick layer. If you don't paint it on <coughs> thick enough, Yes, that'd be great, thank you. If you don't paint it on thick enough, then um, it won't do it. Right. You have to just be really careful not to allow this product to dry out. Hence why we've put this, um, ooh, uh, a bubble. <laughs> this is a bubble, uh, this glad wrap, glad wrap that's what wrap. it's called. What you can also it? put um, foil over the top, aluminum foil, mm -hmm. foil if you like. Um, so this is glad wrap, saran wrap, whatever you yep. want to call it, wherever you are, um, with about two mils of stripper. So it's been sitting on there it's since... About an hour, I think. Close to an hour. So yeah. let's let's see what's happening. So we've only done the back half of this, put the stripper on it. Yeah, so we'll just ditch the uh, glad wrap. Oh, that's gooey. Uh, you can see, though, the polyurethane is already coming off mm -hmm. um, on the Glad Wrap because this product is actually clear. Yeah. Um, so oh, okay. I yeah. think. Uh, but even yeah, it's pretty clear. Color, so you can see the colour of that is the colour of that poly. Yeah. Which is, I reckon it's gone sort of yellow over time. Yes. I'm going to drop it onto this. Yeah. I don't need this for right now. No. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I'm going to come around here because I'm left-handed. So then what you need to do is very carefully... And you can wipe it onto this rag if you need. Yeah. Stuff. You could use a newspaper or something to put your excess on. Yeah, metal bucket, whatever you like. Ugh. And dispose of it mm -hmm. to get it closer. Yeah, maybe. All right, so this is probably going to need a couple of applications as it does. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can, can see, see now... It's starting to lift that finish off. Mm -hmm. I'm not very coordinated, as you can see. Yeah, great. But it's not, it's not a difficult process. This process is messy, and you're working with pretty serious chemicals. Yeah. So you don't want to muck around with it. Um, and you want to make sure that you're wearing your proper safety equipment. So glasses, gloves, mask if you feel like you need it. Work in a well ventilated area um, so that you're not uh, inhaling any of this yucky stuff because this is um, proper, proper strong chemicals. We don't really want to be inhaling any of this for too long. All right, so. Do you want to have a go over this side? Yeah, do you want to have a go? You can sort of see. Oh, and talk about how you would get out of these little bits, you know, these mm. um, 
intricate little crevices here. Yeah, so we haven't actually put stripper on any of these other little no. sections here, but um, for example, if you were to want to strip out of these crevices, you can get a little tool. This is a palette knife. You can use whatever you have handy um, to basically get into all those cracks and crevices and um, scrape it out like that. Just, it would be quite easy. You might have to go over it a few times. It wouldn't, um, you know, that's why we say that you should repair rather than uh, strip, mm -hmm. particularly with this kind of process, because it is quite labour intensive. Yeah. Um, but once you've gotten it to a point like you can see this finish here where most of the existing finishes come off, you can just sand off those last little bits with either steel wool or... Um, yeah, I was going to ask what you would do. Or sandpaper. Mm -hmm. Steel wool or sandpaper? Yeah. Sandy so, hands gloves? Get sandy that hands but gloves. The way, would there be something you can just clean that off with? Yes. So, um, do a pot here? Because it does say water wash. Uh, what do you call it? Water, water cleaner. Wash up or clean up on there. Right. These corner bits are a little tricky. They are. Because I did put some stripper just on this bit here. but Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's not my favourite process in the whole world, yeah, but it's certainly honest, this, effective. This, I like the shellac one, but for this one, I think I would just be sanding back this bad boy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but then it definitely you would to... give you a nice clean cleaner finish. It does. I do agree because my sander would probably, leave sometimes marks. the sanders can leave marks but they could also ruin the edges of your yeah. piece. So I've just got a chucks cloth here um, which I've just dipped into that water. Yep. So basically what we're going to do is now wipe off any excess. So I'm just going to wipe that mm. back. Um, just move your cloth around so you're not going over the same bit and then reapplying your stripper. Okay. Nice little sort of wood under here. All right. And I'm going to show you my fancy sugar soap wipes. So oh, that. don't have difference. a lot of water on your cloth. In fact, I probably got a, a squidgy bit too much there. Yeah, Thank you. Um, now, is that bare timber yet, do you think? It's close. Some Very parts close. of it are bare. Um, but you can see, I think, that the uh, orange stain of the polyurethane has yeah. um, penetrated through to the timber. So I reckon if you sanded it down a bit more, you would yeah. see Just that the, the timber would lighten up a bit. A steel wool 400, I mean, yeah, 40 steel wool or something. Yes, that's right. Paper. Yep. Give it a nice... Yeah, that's right. So you could either put another coat of stripper on this. It's not it's particularly hard, but yeah. it's messy. Yeah. Um, stripper isn't the cheapest product either. Um, so once you've done your water clean up, look at these, Sharon. You're going to love these. I know. I can't wait to okay. go get some. Sugar they, soap. Ooh, they feel almost on one gritty. side. On one side, yeah. Oh, I see. So, so you can scrub. You scrub and then... Oh wow, so they've and got a bit can... of a rough surface here. And this is not an ad for whatever, Sally's sugar soap, but you know. <laughs> so we're doing this Small or the whole things lot? make us excited. Oh, no. We're doing the whole lot. What are we doing? Scrubbing this. Yeah, just so this is how oh, you look. finish off your stripping oh, process. Can see the soap. Look at that. They are so That's easy. So it does have a bit of a rough surface here. So yeah. then you would wipe it off with the inside surface, I'm guessing. So which is a little I bit use softer. these. Um, to prep all my furniture when I clean yeah, it. Yeah, that's great. Oh, it's there's a, actually quite a bit of soap in there. Heaps. So and I you can even yeah, you can do your whole do bit if you want. You might as well piece. not waste it. Well. So even after you've done a hand sanding, these are handy to just wipe over your piece, right? Yeah, that's right. So um, just to finish off uh, stripping here, we what we could do is um, sand just back any excess with some steel wool. I haven't got any clean steel wool. I don't particularly want a new yes. one. Um, so sand that back. Um, get rid of any residual polyurethane, um, wipe it back with a very lightly damp cloth um, to neutralise the product and then clean it off with sugar soap. I'm just getting a bit excited about these sugar soap They're wipes. good, aren't they? <laughs> They're really, I believe really I didn't good. I not discover them yet. I, I can't believe it either. I yeah. use them all the time. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, so right. just to, uh, that's all that I have. Um, yes, is there any more questions? Um, <coughs> 
Uh, da, 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 da. So Susan says, I thought you could paint over those finishes with fusion paint, so why bother stripping it? Yeah, so today, Susan, we're just talking about actually if you want to remove a finish, not to paint it, but if you want to remove it to make it a nice wood finish again and to re-finish it with a polyurethane or a shellac. So if you've missed the first part of the live, jump back and you'll be able to see it from the beginning. And we've also got our part one in how to detect um, what you have on your existing finishes. So we're talking about antique pieces, so we might just pop up those drawers again just for people to see if you've just joined us. Obviously this isn't an antique piece, this table here that we're just working on. Uh, but so this is what we've done, we've cleaned off this section here, which was shellac, and so we've been cleaning that, but we haven't actually put the finish on yet because that's going to be our next slide. Part so three. Part three will be all about putting on a finish. Re what do we call that? Refinishing your antique pieces. So this isn't for painted furniture. This is for if you have a really nice antique piece and you want to know what's on the surface uh, and you want... We could probably take our goggles off now, Julie. We're looking oh. quite special. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, if you have a, an antique piece and you want to refinish it to bring it back into a full restorative... <clears throat> Um, a nice uh, oh, get your singer oh, sewing right. machine of course. thing as well in case anyone missed that at the beginning you'll want to jump back and have a look at this from the live um, Julie has a gorgeous singer sewing machine thing that we were talking about how to so we did not do this part yet but we actually used a bit of Julie's special elixir and you'll get to read about what the ingredients of those are as well we'll do a blog post with all the info